Hey, what's up, everybody? So the other day I was talking to one of my friends who recently graduated college with a computer science degree. So he has some general understanding of like app building, but like, you know, he doesn't have a whole lot of professional experience. But I was trying to explain to him, generally speaking, what you could do in platform uh, for Palantir. And I was kind of framing it around this idea of like the process that you would go through with, you know, building out these workflows. And I, of course, I told him to go to like build.palantir.com, sign up, and, you know, like I recommend everybody go to learn.palantir.com and you can start doing these like end-to-end -end workflows on your own. I think I kind of pushed him that way to say like, hey, you can go out through these trainings and figure out, uh, you know, you know, where to go from there, right? But obviously here I'm trying to show like how quickly you can build something, what you could build, sort of the steps of you know, working with no code solutions as well as like low code solutions as well as like pro code solutions. So this idea was like, how fast can you build from nothing to something, uh, you know, cross platform in like a very quick no code environment, right? And so I was showing them on top of all of this and how you sort of hydrate your high ontology, right? You can essentially layer in AI to the whole process and streamline speed up everything and everything's becomes way easier and that can be also applied in the user experience right and so i'd come up with this idea because i had some movie playing on in the background and i was like hey you know like streaming movies you could have a you know pull information from all these like data sources such as like netflix hulu disney plus prime video and you know and then of course you have like rotten tomatoes and imdb information pertaining to those movies and all the like you know cover image right so you want to consolidate all this information into one platform so you can browse it all and maybe you can query by like you know different information pertaining to the movies maybe you want to search just like as you would ask a regular person like hey you know like i've got this idea of this movie i may want to watch or just like, I don't know exactly what I want to watch, but I know like, hey, Christmas is coming up. Maybe I want to watch a Christmas movie, right? But the idea is that I was walking through this example and of course, like it's easier to just show someone. So I like pulled up my own stack and I started building something with him just to show like, hey, let's pull in some like test data set from like a few years back and then see what we can throw together. And then it kind of like flourished into something kind of cool. So I thought it was worth like sharing with you guys. So the, so here's this thing like I built to show with my friend, but the idea is here's Streamy, right? It's like a unified, consolidated, you know, platform for you to browse your movies. And the idea is, okay, we have like 3,477 movies that are on uh, Hulu, Disney Plus, Prime Video, and Netflix for you to to browse, right? And don't if you see something in here you like, don't like be disappointed later when you go to find it's probably not there anymore because this like i said this is a data set from before so actually i pulled all this information from kegel uh, which kind of has a bunch of different data sets like csv formats and other things that you can kind of yank in just to do like different uh set up little test projects and different things just kind of play with this stuff for research people use it for like uh you know data science stuff but anyway so for the sake of this example, I was just showing how you can sort of bring the data in, you know, build out your pipeline, you know, and then elevate it up to this, you know, app, building an application of this, you know, powerful thing, and then sort of adding AI on top of it. So the idea is here, you can come in here. Most of the time, you don't know what kind of movie you really want to search for. So you can kind of scroll through like you normally do, right? Um, and so maybe 28 weeks later, for example. And you click it and you get information about the movie, like how well it did in the box office. What is its rating? Oh, the rating's kind of, yeah, it's, it's a pretty fair rating, I guess. Um, so it says like, okay, well, of all the streaming platforms, this one is only available on Hulu. So like maybe I go search on Hulu or maybe I have this link me out to Hulu, right? You can, there's so many ways you can go about this, right? This, the idea here is, hey, it's just like a, a simple, you know, joining of all this information for you to make use of it, right? Uh, but maybe I, kind of want to like filter it down further and i'm like okay maybe i'm in the mood for like a i don't know clint eastwood directed movie for example right so here's a clint eastwood directed movie maybe i want to watch million dollar baby <laughs> okay so that's on netflix and here's information pertaining to that movie right so get a pretty good score uh but i'd set up like okay well you can you know maybe you want to you have specific criteria that you can like filter by right if this then that right you would set up your conditions 
but not everyone likes to sort of process and think that way when they go searching for stuff like this. So the idea is that maybe like in an AI types environment, right, you could actually ask it clear text, you know, hey, um, you know, I'm kind of feeling like watching a really good comedy or something, right? So which, let me expand this so you can see better. Which comedies from the last, which comedy movies from the last decade have been smash hits at the box office? So like, I don't want to have to go look for this. And maybe this allows the AI to reason, right? What is a smash hit in the box office? And, you know, it, it's going to make some assumptions like maybe, uh, okay, so it says above 100 million would be like a good assumption, right? That, okay, comedy movies, the last decade that did over 100 million in the box office. And I'm seeing a trend here. It seems like the, you know, kids movies do really well. <laughs> and of course, like I said, this data set, maybe it's like up to like 2019. So, you know, it is what it is. But if I took out that box, uh, box office constraint, right, you're going to see way more comedies available in the last decade from this data pool, right? But that's the idea, right? So I just want to be able to, I have this idea. I don't necessarily know exactly what I'm looking for, but I know broadly. And so I can apply the same type of logic or thought process to this. So, you know, maybe the kids want to watch a movie together, right? So I'm going to say, all right, a little, a little bit of context. I'm 35 years old and I'd like to show my two small children, children, family, slash movies that were popular when I was in elementary. Okay, well, that's there's going to have to be some reason here. Well, I'm 35. When would I have been in elementary school, right? And then what are, like, children, family movies that I may want to watch with the kids, right? So here's really popular movies that were popular about the time when I was in elementary, right? So I could come in here and be like, oh, cool. Oh, I'd like to watch Tarzan. Well, Tarzan's available on all three platforms. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I've never heard of this movie, but maybe I would want to watch it. Right? So it's on Disney Plus, so the score is like horrendous. So maybe I don't want to watch that. But the idea is it's just kind of help you browse using uh, Mighty Ducks. Love Mighty Ducks movies. But anyway, so on to another example. So maybe I just want to watch a movie, Me and the Wife. Probably just me, because <laughs> I'm in. I want to watch an action movie, right? I've got a pretty cool home theater setup, so I'm like, all right, I've got an awesome Dolby Atmos setup, and so uh, show me great action flicks I can watch that you know. Let's see if I can edit this right. That supports Dolby Atmos. Right, so I can fetch that. <clears throat> and the reason being is like, all right, so if you don't know, Dolby Atmos is essentially like surround sound, but it's three-dimensional sound. So you have like uh, speakers in the ceilings and stuff like that, right? And so, all right, well, here's some, some pretty cool action movies that uh, support Dolby Atmos sound, right? So, uh, okay, what would I want to watch? Maybe X-Men. All right, so X-Men, I got it. It's on Disney+. Plus. So if I go on Disney Plus, I can go stream this X-Men flick, right? And it did 200 million in the box office. It's rated PG-13. So that's, yeah, that's a pretty good option there. The ratings, yeah, yeah, pretty good a shot. So that's the idea. Maybe one more example, and then we can, I can show you what's the details behind that. Let's see. <laughs> All right, so show me what highly rated movies contain graphic nudity so that I can avoid them. Yuck. Right? Show me movies I don't want to see. I, I don't want any graphic nudity in my movie. Okay. So IMDb score greater than seven. See, like some of these things, the, uh, right, the model's going to try to like fill in the blank, right? You're leaving a little bit of room for it to sort of reason. Uh, so the idea is like, okay, highly rated movie so i guess if it's an ibd score of seven or greater right i didn't define that it defines that um and then okay rating content contains the keyword graphic nudity right so here's these movies right so x machima wow that's a pretty good score oh but you know so i definitely won't watch this later on netflix so you know that's the gist right this is just an example of consolidating information quickly into one platform, setting up this cool uh, 
workshop module for you to interface with, you know, plugging in AI and agents and stuff into the actual like user experience, as well as like the actual backing as to like how we built this. You can actually like, you know, in pipeline builder, for example, when you're building this stuff out, say what you're trying to do to like clean the data, for example, right? And you can use AI throughout everything. So this was just like a really cool way for him to sort of wrap his head around what you could do, you know, in Foundry with AIP. And so, like I said, I went on this site. Uh, so for here, here's like data sets pertaining to Netflix, Prime Video, Disney, Hulu. I don't, uh, I don't know exactly when it was updated last. That's why I said maybe like 2019 or something, right? So three years ago. Okay, three years ago it got updated. That's when it was last updated. So I pulled in information. Here's my thought process, right? I'm like, all right, give me movie, all the movies from Netflix, all the movies from pretty much all the platforms, right? Go to IMDb, figure out, you know, get the metadata information, give me a, a subset of all the movie information that it knows. Go out and fetch like the cover photo information, get like Rotten Tomato information. So it's a bunch of different stuff, right? It's, it's siloed data, right? So what we're going to do is, you know, we're going to essentially like bring all this information and just like funnel it into one system of like movie record, right? That we can sort of search against, right? And so this is essentially the idea of like data flows through to that front end for us to sort of interface with, right? So what we did was essentially pull in the data sets from Hulu, Disney, Prime Video, Netflix, like I said, IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, the, the, the posters, we, we go through all of this sort of like pipelining and funneling it down to this movie data set that we use as our backing data set to the movie object in the ontology. And so workshop is essentially like an object based, you know, module for you to build front ends off of. So like it interfaces with the, uh, you know, back end data that is this movie object, right? And so when you're coming in here and you're adding your little widgets and you know, dragging and dropping and configuring how they're going to look and how they're going to interface with each other and how, what context does this AI, you know, client, which is an interactive widget, have to like the underlying data, what is it interfacing with as far as like this filtered object set, uh, you know, and then of course, because he has a computer science background, doesn't have a whole lot of commercial experience, but he has somewhat of a decent understanding of like defining variables in code, right, and building out like object oriented programming principles to write applications and stuff. So I was just kind of generally showing him what you could do here. And I thought that this was actually like a pretty cool uh, <laughs> use case that it's a really good way to like, just broadly get your hands on and learn and experience the platform. So if you know, you guys are interested, I'm going to probably put down in the in the uh, details on the on this video the link to this data set, but you essentially just go out there and try to build something like this and just feel free to reach out to me for any questions. But the, the idea is simple, you know, go to build.palantir.com, sign up for your own stack and start building something like this, right? Just like get experience, learn, feel like, you know, like you won't know the ins and outs of how this stuff sort of works until you actually like try. So this is just like a really good use case example to, to learn from. So good luck.